Hello there, it is Sonia here. Welcome to another video and I have one for you that I think you're gonna love because I, well, I just kind of think you do. So back in 2019, I talked about a particular tutorial that I was planning to do. Now it is one that I shared a picture of on my Instagram and oh, if you've not had a look there before, there is lots of fun things to have a look at as you do. <laughs> oh, but this one here. Oh, no, not the Goomba, although I did want to do a tutorial for that one. <sighs> this one. <laughs> I think you'll agree it's super cute and using only two balloons, it's super brilliant. So let's see how to do that design. I think it's no secret, but a lot of the heavy lifting in that picture is done by the artwork. So the balloons, we're not going to focus a lot on them, but we are going to use one five inch round and one 260. In saying that, I have run out of five inch rounds, so I'm going to use a six inch quick link, but I am going to make it suit my purpose just real quick. All right. <clears throat> It's tied a knot and I'm inverting it so I can have a round balloon instead. So I'm just being mindful to make sure it's as round as possible without saying to elongate into the neck area. Perhaps see there the, oh no, no not really, just on the balloon at the very top there there's just this sort of um, little star shape just hinting at what's hidden beneath but we're going to make that one nice and round so now we've got the head we need to do the body now the body is going to take two 260 balloons i have chosen to go ahead with the spring lilac and let's inflate the first one now i do like to start with the legs and you'll see why now with this design, uh, you've probably seen something very much like it before because it is a very versatile kind of body to do the arms and legs with and I am not the original creator of this design. If you do know who it is, please make sure to shout them out below. But I think it's such a commonplace one that we see when we are making bodies. We're just going to make it purpose built for a cute little baby. So we're going to start off with the pedal twist. You can see I've pulled that knot all the way through. Next to bubble, about as long as it is wide. Be sure to give it a pinch twist. Now, I just want to soften this ever so slightly, so I'm giving it a squish. But now I'm just going to make it about a hand width of a bubble. And then I am going to repeat what I have here. And I tend to like to finish with a pinch twist. As opposed to a loop twist. I don't know, I just feel like it is a lot more of a secure way to finish off. Let's tie that one off. Note that the knot should be pulled through all the way as well to really help lock that in place. And she is ready for the next part. Mm -hmm. I've inflated it about this long. You can tell I'm not paying a lot of attention to how much length I've inflated it. And for good reason, I don't think we really need to focus down in on that in this kind of design because we do need to have two of the 260s, but we don't need to use a lot in each one. So here I am going to start now with the arms and I am basically doing the same as I started with for the legs. However, in this instance, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller because it's the hands. They're generally a bit smaller, yeah? That's important. That really helps lock things in. You'll notice this bubble is also a bit smaller than my last. I don't want the arms to be too long. A lot of the appeal, I think, is in the shorter portions of the design. It's about two and a half fingers. One, 
in two. Pinch twists are going to form the neck area. Now, we need to now get the legs at this point. So what I would like you to do when you are doing this, squish. Decide how long you want the torso to be. I'm gonna say a body of about three fingers before I start to push it and soften it around this area. So you'll notice instead of trying to maintain a fairly even pressure of air, that in this case, I'm almost flattening out the base a little bit more. Don't fill with it too much because it doesn't need to be. But now I'm gonna take those legs. you can see what I'm doing here but you'll notice that it's not just simply wrapped around the legs of the balloon but we have flattened it out a little bit intentionally here it's going to help us to kind of make those legs go secure into the base as much as we want them to be and then where this is going to mini and where this is going to meet the pinch twist I have made in the neck so secure that in oh secure twist rolling it through a bit there. So I hope you can see that there's a bit of a difference there and it was worth all that extra effort. I can see the light behind mine and I can even see through the balloon, uh, the balloon body and see the legs in there and it looks pretty cool what it's doing. Okay, quite see. Let's show you. Some alternative angles there. To finish off the body of the bub, we are going to repeat what we've done on the side. <laughs> you can squish if you need, encourage your air that way a bit more if you're feeling the balloons feeling a little bit tight like mine was. Pinch twisting with that last bubble. Let's do away with the excess. Sorry, I just had to delete some space so I can keep recording. Goodness me. And finishing that off. Not being passed through to finalize. Now I am going to add the head to this body and Sure when I grasp this knot that that's what I incorporate into those pinch twists as opposed to this side because then it's going to be a little bit more floppy. To make it nice and secure the knot needs to be incorporated into that twist. And before we fit and before we add the artwork that's what we're looking at right now. So She's pretty cute, I think, or he. Let's just do a quick refresh on what that artwork was, shall we? That is what I'm going to try and replicate. And basically we've got a couple of really big eyes, really cute smile and a big bow on top of the head. It's going to be great. So my go-to's are always my Sharpies and my black permanent Maxi Flow marker as well as the white Posca paint pen in order to recreate my artwork. Generally I like to lay down the colour first then add the black and then we get the white. It does depend on the circumstances but yeah that's basically how I'm going to take this one. So selecting first my colour for the bow. So pretty much with the bow I am going to make it go on top of the head. This is a although you can't really see it it's a really good point of reference for me um, I'm going to do the first part the knot of the bow just in front of that so if the top of my balloon is here this is where the central part of the bow is just doing something really big and bold there Pretty much, if you can imagine, a love heart, but with a soft rounded bottom, or the bottom is concealed inside that circular knot. <laughs> I 
Make sure you go ahead to repeat that on the other side. Now, if you'd like to do so and you're not constrained by time, I would highly suggest add a bit of colorful shading to your design. So I'm basically here selecting a darker shade of the color that I have. And I'm just gonna add that darkness. Just kind of avoiding the center part. Basically just trying to suggest that a bit of depth within that bow where it's all scrunched in. <laughs> the magic is going to happen when we add black, I promise you that. Now while I do have the darker pink and the lighter pink in my possession, it's a good time to also take the opportunity to add the smile. So this little cherub has a very big and wide grin. Aiming here to kind of get it central with where we've got the center of the bow. When adding the cheeks, I like to go for a nice pale pink and I'm just going to do a couple of generous size circles. Take the time to get them as even as possible. And just remembering there's no reason why you can't turn your design this way and that to try and match those shapes a little bit. Next I'm going to go in to add the eyes. When layering in the black I tend to want to do the part I want to draw white on sooner rather than later to give that more of an opportunity to dry before I attack it with the posca. So I'm deviating slightly from the design if you go to check it out on my Instagram but not too far because you know close enough right? But these days I like to do my eyes with a bit of an egg shape to them. So more um, wider at the bottom than it is at the top. And I think that just adds a little extra element of cuteness. Uh, just note how I am overlapping it here with the cheek a little bit. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, it really needs those little extra bits and pieces to really set her off though, because she's looking a little bit creepy. <laughs> going to go ahead to add some eyelashes in. I'm going to pick a point just in front of the eye. This can also help smooth out any sort of imperfections that you are seeing on your design. Oh yes, she's looking a bit nicer there. We are going to throw in some eyebrows and I've kind of got my bow in the way here. So if your bow's not in the way, uh, you can... <laughs> Put a little bit more over the top of the eye, but mine's a little bit off to the side there. I'm okay with that. Still cute enough. Right, and then I like to draw a line around the mouth. Helps to add to the cartoon feel, especially if I'm going to be doing the same thing with the bow on its head. Here as well, I can take the opportunity to fix up the shape of the mouth a little bit if I'm not satisfied with it. Because I'm mostly satisfied. I, just, I think I can tidy that up a little bit. I'm a bit happier with how that mouth came out. It's a cute little itty bitty tiny nose because why not? Yeah, she's cute. Let's add some hair. Nice sweet little spiral. And then we're going to go ahead to outline the bow. Just kind of trying to suggest with my line work that there is that. Uh, natural creasing in the fabric of the bow where the knot is. Then let's just outline around our bow shapes. Just taking the opportunity to go in there slightly. That is intentional, I assure you. Well, it's not intentional, it's that little bit of black that I just got there. Can you see it? Yeah. Rude. That is a problem though with laying down artwork that it may shift slightly when you are moving it about and doing other elements to the design. <laughs> Something to be aware of, yeah? I think that's looking pretty good. 
Now what I think really brings life to this design is adding the shine to the eyes because before you do, uh, it just doesn't look as appealing. So please, I beg of you, if you can, make sure you add shine to the eye. I did a birthday party recently where I did not follow my own advice because I forgot this at home. I did not love the result. When using the posca, you should be able to lay that color straight on. With shine of the eyes, remember the light source comes from the one direction and therefore it needs to be on the same side of the eye. You don't want it on opposite sides of the eye. So here and not there. Try and replicate that shape and size as much as possible. Now I am noticing a bit of muddying of my white and that does tend to happen sometimes but you can get past that with your Posca paint markers, trust me. Because I use the same ones again and again. So I like to put in a sweet little heart shape for my shine. It's basically doing a bit of a V with your marker. You'll see me doing that a lot, basically. I love it. And there we have our sweet baby. Now, as a bonus, because if you watched this far, you deserve it. What you might notice on the original design is I drew in a sweet little love heart balloon kind of idea. I have some stickers left over from an Easter event that I did recently, and I'm just going to pick one of those to decorate that onesie a little. Meeny money mo. Kind of cute ones on here, actually. Get out. <laughs> I found what I want. It's a beautiful little love heart balloon. How cute, how fitting, how beautiful. That's it for this video. Let's see if I can rush this out before my timer runs out with the addition of that sweet little love heart. That is it for this balloon design. So thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you like this video. I would really love it if you can support me by giving this video a big thumbs up. It helps my work to be seen out there. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe? Because I have lots of fun balloon ideas that I'd love to share with you. But otherwise, that is it for this time. So thank you so much for helping me put a positive twist in your life. And I let... <laughs> And I look forward to you joining me in my next video. Bye.